Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Grace. Um, I've been away for a little bit. Today we're gonna do a new moon video, new moon in Aries. It's the first new moon of the new year according to the cycles of the earth, right? We have many versions of the new year. The one that happens in January, the Chinese new year, and then also Ostara. Did I pronounce that right? The beginning of spring. And this is the first lunar cycle since the first day of spring, which makes it one of the more important new moons because the, every new moon is about setting an intention. It's about a direct, setting a direction and intention, um, wanting to make moves planning, strategizing. So let's talk really quickly about Aries. Aries is the baby of the zodiac, the first zodiac sign. So Aries comes on the scene like a tiny ball of fire. <laughs> and uh, Aries basically comes screaming out the womb saying, I'm here, I'm on the scene. And so I think that Aries want, the energy of Aries wants to be seen and acknowledged, sort of like Leo does. But Aries is a little, also a little bit different because Aries is drawing on sort of like this fresh energy, this new energy of creativity, this desire to like get things going. We're here, let's begin. Okay. And so um, this is a great time to set intentions not just for the micro and macro cycles of the moon, micro being the two week, micro being the two week, macro being six months from now when the full moon in Aries happens in October. But the whole year, also the whole whole year, set the intention for the whole year. What do you what are you hoping to accomplish? What are you really going to focus on this year as your desire, your intent of what you want to create? Okay. And so for me and this channel, I'll say this, um, cause you remember if you were here before we did like in a video every single day since end of December, um, up until middle of February or like end -ish of February. And that was fun. That was an awesome project. I learned a lot. It was intense though. It was intense. I was in a point in my life. I was in a timeless void, uh, but it was super fun. And to be honest with you, I resisted coming back just a little bit because I knew it wasn't going to be like that. Okay. So here's what I'm going to tell you right now. I'll come back <laughs> and I'll, I'll create moon cycle videos. So that means at least two videos a month. Um, just talking about working with the phases of the moon and talking about the energy of the astrological symbols, the signs, what they offer us, what we can glean from them. And then if I feel like there's a special message that needs to be talked about, I will create extra videos. Um, some other things I'm really interested in doing is sharing the spreads that I use in a more sort of technical, like how to way. I'm interested in doing like elemental videos, air, earth, water, fire. And then the rest is, you know, what inspiration will come is what we'll do it. So anyway, this is my plan y'all. And, uh, as well as I have, and I did this earlier this year, I actually did it like at the beginning of the year, I pulled from this deck, the illuminated love Oracle deck. It's an awesome deck. I got it in Portland at psychic sisters. It's like you, if you've seen some of the older videos. I sometimes do these to calibrate energy. Um, I did a 12 card spread for the year, like, Hey, 2022, what is good? I know you can't see that. So <laughs> let's not force it, but I will read you what April is about because this video is getting posted April 1st. 
we have interdimensional. Activation of an expanded experience of self. Claim your interdimensional nature, evolving consciousness, the truth of who you are. Widen the lens of awareness to engage a broader understanding of your soul's journey. Okay. A wider lens of perspective to get a broader awareness. Engage a broader understanding of your soul's journey. A lot of the tarot readers I watch online, I'll just say this, they've been talking about this mass awakening in April of this year, mid-April. Will we see it? I don't know. What's going to happen mid-April? I don't know. Interestingly, that's something my dad used to talk a lot about, or sometimes, not a lot. He's mentioned it enough times that I made a note of it. He said people are going to start waking up. To what? Let's hope. <laughs> um, so that's April for you guys. And so I will, every month, there's a new video, I'll, I'll go back to this 2022 calibration spread and talk about the the energies of the month okay this month we have the activation of an expanded experience of self think about what that means for you and you know since we missed march i'll tell you march is too this is where we just came from and maybe you can for yourself glean that energy shift march was recalibration your shit is shook. Vibrate yourself awake. Embrace chaos, reorganization, surrender to the magic and potential. It's a new way of being that emerges. Meet conditioning from the past with compassion as old identities fall away. So what old parts of you have fallen away in March? Likely you have seen some new way forward, a better way forward. Okay. And now you see that there's maybe a lot more to something, a situation, or even just yourself, your inner world, than what was there before. In that way, we're opening ourselves to possibilities. Possibilities is important. Possibilities is important. Seeing possibilities is an important feature of change and adapting to change. And change is what's happening. Changes is what's always happening. So, get with it. That's the Illuminated Love Oracle. Now, let's go ahead and pull a special message for the new moon in Aries. I talked a little bit already about what this energy means. And I feel like that there are some more nuanced messages that want to come through. Um, some of which I understand to be about, you know, how we go about going after the things that we want um, requires a little bit of care. So, for example, the energy of the new moon in Aries is this is the period of time um, in which to remove the voice of the self saboteur from your head. Just all the wor all those words, those beliefs that have held you back. We're cleaning that stuff up. Now, just because we're, you know, talking to ourselves differently now, it doesn't give us the right to treat other people um, with that same kind of tough love and harshness. As, so as we move through the world, I feel like there's a message here with, with the new moon Aries energy um, to take extra care because everyone wants to go for what they want. Some people are going to go about it in a very quick manner. And maybe just like roll over some toes, you know, like what, what the, there's the potential here to like step on some toes, walk over people. And that's never what we want. Um, but we also have to acknowledge that, but, and we have to acknowledge that, um, in order to get what we want, usually there is an aspect of community involved and, um, and, and honestly just like camaraderie, like we don't ever achieve anything meaningful in a silo or uh independently so while there is this desire to go after your dreams or to make progress i would at least say 
to think about it. Think about it, strategize, be tactical about how it is you go after those things. You are absolutely deserving of all the things, dreams, desires that you have. I just think that <laughs> the Aries energy makes us feel like, it, it, it makes us perceive that because we don't yet have it, we have, to, it's like this, why haven't you gotten it yet? Okay, they're like, that's just the danger of the Aries energy. That's all. That's all I'm saying. So just be extra careful and compassionate with people. It sort of reminds me of like um, the streets in Chicago, like driving around on like the first beautiful summery spring sort of weather days. Everyone's driving like crazy. You got to be extra careful. Mm hmm. Okay, so let's pull some more Moonology cards. I've got the Moonology deck here. We'll get three of these, and then I'll I have my uh, Northern Animal Tarot as well. Oh, can you see that? You could see it, but it's not doing anything. All right, New Moon and Aries down there. Any nuances for the collective in this new moon Aries? Oh boy. It's been a minute. We have a new start is coming, the new moon. Of course. Of course it is. Spring is finally here. We have cardinal moon. Be bold and make the first move. So luck is on your side here. Have faith in your dreams. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. This is exactly what's happening. The new start that's coming. About what I said about removing the voice of the self-saboteur. If you believe in your dreams, the thing that is possible. In... So much so that you're not afraid to make that first move into that direction. I feel like things are going to start lining up pretty quickly. This is the time to orient. Remember the quarter game? We're back at the quarter game. Oh my god, that was like one of my first metaphors. The quarter game is like the, uh, it's like this thing that just, the slide that just keeps moving. It doesn't stop. And you have to be the tactical about when you're dropping your quarter, when you're, when is the time to invest and in to make that first move for the biggest payout. Aries just wants you to be sort of like, give me all the quarters, give me this roll, ten dollars, you'll throw it down and it'll just, they'll splash all over the place. So remember to think about what it is that you're doing, how you're doing it, this new moon Aries. Alright, let's see if we can shuffle, this is a new deck. <laughs> this is the second edition of the Northern Animal Tarot deck that I had been using uh, for most of my earlier videos in January. The second edition deck just came last month and they're brighter. They're like, they've got like updated colors and all that. This is such a special deck. Mm, I have a, another set, like an unused set. That maybe I'll do as a part of a giveaway in the future. If you want, uh, if you want me to do that, you can drop a comment, and maybe once I have enough interest, like I don't know, once I have over a hundred something, one hundred or one fifty, I can do a giveaway to like a group of that amount of people. So share the video, help me get some subscribers on here, and maybe you can win yourself one of these. Okay. New Moon Aries. We'll do one more shuffle. We'll break them in. We'll break them in together this day. messages as the energy underneath the owls okay this is one of the special cards of this deck it just means messages 
So just validation that there are messages coming through, something that probably I'm not yet aware of or that I haven't said yet. We have the quarter moon. It's another special card of this deck because they have all the phases of the moon. The quarter moon just says like, it's time to be grateful for what we have here. So in order to have a new beginning, we need to be grateful for what we have so far. Oh my gosh, another special card of the deck, the seed. The seed is the new beginning. And it suggests that new life starts in our darkest moments. Okay, so if this is for somebody who feels like they've having, been having a really, really rough go of it, this is a little bit of glimmer of hope. New life begins in total darkness, in the seed, in the ground. Have faith in your dreams. We have uh, this eight of pentacles. So this is about work. Uh, maybe some, somebody is thinking about um, a direction of their career um, or just building up a new skill. Okay, maybe turning a hobby into a fruitful sort of business. Okay, that is the energy of the new moon Aries. And honestly, just the, the of this period of time is that the things that we believe will grow quickly. So whether you believe you can or you can't, you are correct. If you believe you can achieve something and you're operating, working in such a method that is affirming your belief, of course it's going to be possible. Everything's going to be possible with that sort of... So whether you believe or you can't, whether you believe you can or can't, you are correct. Have faith in your dreams and do the work. Behave how you believe. Oh man, I forgot about this. Another special card. This one is actually brand new with the second edition. It was not in the first edition card. Uh, it's a full moon eclipse. So this is a spicy energy. <laughs> I'm not sure what to say about it because yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Something spicy. Okay. Dead center. We have death. Yep, something is changing here. So um, this is showing up under Cardinal Moon be bold to make the first move right under the seed. And so look at this imagery because we have the seed and death, which is like partially underground as well. Something has been incubated for a very, very long period of time. Something has been either repressed something has been sort of nurtured and I feel like something is wanting to come out now. Something is finally going to see the light of day. Something you've been working on, something, I don't know. It's a new start is coming. I feel like this is, this is a new mode of expression, a new mode, like showing, this is Aries. This is showing up on the scene and saying like, I've been here, I am here. Maybe it's claiming your stake. Maybe it's changing about how you want to, what you want to believe. Hmm. Awesome. We have the sun. The sun is the, an awesome card of just like light and positivity, finding the joy in, in, in sort of what you're doing. So we have this showing up under have faith in your dreams. This is about ha being, keeping a positive mind state about, the, about your work. This is about somebody doing the work, but doing it in such a way that they're keeping a pod positive state of mind of things. They're believing in the work that they're doing is going to lead to a positive outcome. This isn't about sitting and doing the work and ruminating over like, this isn't the kind of work I want to be doing. Get yourself out of that situation. Or if you're in a situation where you feel like you're having to do work that is menial or work that um, needs to be developed, like either you're developing a skill and you're really enjoying your time being sort of new, <clears throat> excuse me, new at something or um, there's, there's sort of just like this inherent belief that your your work on something, your investment into something, yourself, your skills, whatever it is, whether you're having a positive or a negative experience of it, you're framing this positively. Because even if there's things about it that are not ideal, you're having faith that you're doing this for the right reasons. 
and it's leading to something greater. It's going to bring you a lot of joy, a lot of happiness. Let's keep going. We have the Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, this this showed up under a new start is coming where we have gratitude and also this like winky full moon eclipse card. So it's I feel like this is saying um, good things come to those who wait is sort of the message that I'm getting here. The Wheel of Fortune is saying that everything happens in divine timing. This is also another big change card. The cycles of up and down, right? Things come, they go, they ebb, they flow. We're in darkness, now we're in light. And so in moments of darkness, if we can find things to still be grateful for, find things to fi find like the, the silver lining or the little pieces of gold, you know, that becomes highly rewarding. Whatever it is that you've been holding on to, finding gratitude for the little things you like will bring even more more great things into your life similarly worrying about things brings more things to worry about into your life so wherever you are now know that this sort of this this karmic energy of the wheel of fortune is returning to you what you've invested into it into time what if you programmed into time um Um, there was another message earlier about the uh, new moon in Aries, something about like sort of watch what you say or just be careful because things might want to come out very quickly. It's that impulse. Aries is impulsive. <laughs> so um, with that, we might say things we don't mean or just get into situations where we're like just not... Um, we maybe we want to say something, but we're holding our tongues. This is the karma that's coming back for all of those deeds, okay? Next, we have the Seven of Cups showing up as be bold and make the first move. This is about making a decision. Are you deciding to change? Are you coming out of your shell? It appears as though you are. It appears as though you are, and you're, you're going to... We just came out of Pisces energy... And Pisces is great. It's extremely romantic and it's extremely fantastical and magical. And, and this is the card of fantasy, the Seven of Cups. It's about having too many choices, but like there, it's <laughs> plagued with indecision, you know? So I feel like there's a decision being made here about what to pursue in this line, we have be bold and make the first move. You're going to have to decide with this card. And maybe that's the change where you've sort of been this seed in the ground, taken in, soaking, a, soaking up whatever, whenever it rains. You're like, I'll take what I can get. It's raining now. I'll be nourished. When it stops raining, what do you do when you have needs, um, when you have desires? When you have goals, you got to make that first move. Uh, yep, yep. And then finally, we have the Ace of Pentacles We're talking about a new start, a new beginning, a new opportunity. This is a major opportunity. This is coming under have faith in your dreams under the Eight of Pentacles and the Sun. So I really believe that while this spring is turning, right, while spring is coming in, is being ushered in, Aries is really going to light the fire here. And basically, what I feel like is throw us into our course for the year, right? Like, you can let it happen to you, or you can be bold and make the first move. In any case, Put in the work. Put in the work and effort of remaining positive and grateful for what it is that you have, even if you want it to change. Because it's going to change no matter what. Being grateful just attracts more awesome things into your life. I feel like that's the change that's happening here, and then you'll get this new opportunity. 
an opportunity to go after your dreams, to get the thing you've been dreaming about. Here are some other messages possibly for folks watching. Something around work is definitely changing. Um, I feel like this is especially true for people who have seasonal work. Um, I believe that there's going to be some like major opportunities if you in work if you leave yourself open. Um, and sort of open to possibilities. So open sort of means like, yes, open-minded, but I'm also receiving here like available. So um, again, an Aries message in, in, in that regard, Aries energy could be saying, um, you, we might be tempted to take the first opportunity that comes toward us. Maybe it seems like a good opportunity, but maybe there's a better one coming down the road. So you know, stick to what you know feels good. Um, let's remember that the North Node is in Taurus. And so it'll stay there for like two years or so, 18 months, two years, whatever. The point is, and South Node in Scorpio. Maybe I should make a video just on that. But the point is, is that North Node in Taurus, this is a collective energy. We are all needing to make decisions based on the things we value. Stay true to what you value. So don't just take the first thing that comes your way and like book all your time out if that starts to happen. Really look at what is being offered here. There's danger in the choices sometimes. That's another message of the Seven of Wands. You got to ground yourself. I love seeing that we have this, literally all this earth, the seed, and then death is like of the earth. It's like, this this flower like bl blossoming out of the decay the change that happens the cycles and yet we're still sort of like mentally or i guess emotionally operating in this very sort of fantasy land about our ideas or our desires instead of being very real about it be very real be grateful for everything that you currently have because it's great. It's amazing. And you've probably spent a lot of time working on everything that you have to be where you are. So keep that positive mind state. Hey. Eh? And that golden opportunity will present itself. Danger. Where is this? <laughs> Danger in the choices. One cloud. There could be one storm that rolls in with a ton of opportunities. If you take them all, take as many as you like. If you take them all, you won't be available anymore for this golden opportunity. Your dream. Okay? What am I going to say about this guy right here? Oh, man, I really don't know. I mean, the energy of it, though, is giving me Scorpio South Node vibes. So I'll just talk about that really quickly since we talked about uh, the Taurus North Node. North Node. The Scorpio South Node says... The south node is, is any time we sort of go back and retreat. When we retreat to Scorpio, it means we're retreating to like our shadows. When we retreat to Scorpio in the south node, it's when we're dealing with our shadow selves, it's when we're dealing with our fears, our traumas, right? The, the traumas of our lived experiences, the fears of our embodied, li like, embodied experiences as, like, who we perceive that we are, um, and the limitations that we perceive based on, like, we, where we come from, real or perceived limitations, you know, so it's our job to, in this life, overcome those things, and how you do that is toward the North Node, right? They're always in opposition of one another. So there's times when we go back to do shadow work. At least that's what Scorpio is saying. It's like, this is a very potent time to be doing shadow work, to be understanding, unraveling why we believe the things that we do. Do we believe them to be true? 
Um, what are the emotions, the thoughts, again, the beliefs driving our actions? I do see that this, there's, there's a seed here, brand new change out of total darkness. So what I see here is somebody basically overcoming this south node Scorpio moving more toward Taurus, Taurus north node. The sun is here, which is accepting sort of like with joy and positivity. So maybe we're somewhere like in the middle there, right? Even astrologically, if we look at that, if we're going backwards, because the nodes always move in retrograde. I don't know if I'm turning this. I'm, it, I'm visualizing it. It makes sense to me. The way that I see the months in my head. Anyways, so Leo comes before Taurus in that regard. If you're still following me. And so we're in the point now. Guys, I'm sorry. I just realized that this is Scorpio, right? Death is Scorpio. So there's, there is a reason. And it just clicked for me. I apologize. There's a reason for this to be giving me Scorpio vibes. And so I feel validated in this moment. <laughs> I'm so rusty. Uh, lean into this with me. We have Leo. We have Scorpio. Okay. We're in, we're, we're in the part of transmuting our fears or working through the fears in such a way where we feel more positive. We're saying, I understand this about myself. This is how I regress. This is how I go back to an old way of doing things. A, like, uh, we're more progressed now. It's not that we don't have those shadow elements of ourselves, but we're more progressed now. We can see how and why this works in the way that we operate this way in the universe, in the world, in society. We have our own modes of expression. The sun is just saying like, look, I'm working on this. And the sun is saying, I'm going to maintain a positive attitude about the changes that I'm ushering into my life. And I'm going to maintain a positive attitude about the dreams that I want to um, achieve. This is, all, this, is, this is saying, have faith in your dreams. If you are successfully doing all of this work, absolutely this, this golden opportunity is coming for you. If you're still sort of thinking about like what it is that you got to do, what, which one of these shadow things do you address first? Be bold and make the first move. Just pick one thing. Pick one thing to go after to heal for yourself and change it. Try to change it into something positive because what you get is what you put into it for sure. That's the energy of this like this, this wheel of fortune karma card. It's saying change. We got double change here. Double change and effort, like work. Are you doing the work so that when change inevitably does come, you're prepared to step into the version of yourself that you've been honing? Or are you still deciding who you're going to be when this year? Okay, I think that's that's all I have for now. Um, I'll just read from the book because y'all know that I like to get um, extra messages from the moon cards. Let's see here. We have the new moon. Show me something I don't know. I'll see it when I believe it. Do you see that? Did you hear that difference? Not, I'll believe it when I see it. I'll see it when I believe it. And we have here, have faith in your dreams. And we talked a lot about beliefs already. I'll see it when I believe it. Yeah, you will. Because this is all about manifestation. It says also, forget about the past. Your belief that your dreams can manifest is working well. You will soon start to feel more hopeful about getting what you want. 
Time to wipe the slate clean. If the situation you asked about is becoming toxic, either that will clear up now or something totally new and fresh is on its way. The new moon, the new moon is basically a yes card, you know. Then we have the cardinal moon. Um, is Aries a cardinal sign? I don't know. Do you know? It is. Aries is a cardinal sign, along with Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn. It says, I'm taking charge of my destiny. Um, if you're serious about sorting things out, you may need to take the lead in some way or step up as a leader. Avoid being reckless or moving too fast. We talked about that. Come into your power. The time for action is now. We talked about that. Ask Ganeshu, the Hindu elephant god, for help do that um, be bold and follow your heart and your emotions absolutely make decisions based on what feels good not out of obligation mm -hmm. the cardinal signs are powerful and self-starting they're determined and great at organizing drawing this card strongly suggests that you're going to need to be all those things to get your ideal resolution or position in the situation you're asking about this card may challenge you on how strongly you really want something if you're worrying about a situation it's suggesting to be less passive take an assertive stance as you steer events where you want them to go speak up for what you want yerp okay and the last one waxing crescent moon There's waxing moon. Where's waxing crescent moon? Okay, I guess there it is. It says, I'm focused on what I want. Mm. Be patient as events unfold. Don't look back. Stay focused on moving forward. Dig a little deeper to find more courage. Very cool. Overall, this card suggests there's every reason to be hopeful for a very positive outcome to the situation you're asking about, so keep faith. You must keep working towards whatever it is that you want. If you can't take practical steps, spend time meditating on the question and allow your higher self to download information to you about your next step. The situation you're asking about is still taking shape. Don't give up. Mm-hmm. Everything will be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it's not the end. Wow. So there's definitely going to be some, some rebalancing here for sure. Um, there's a level of, you know, the gratitude here is sort of like acceptance. Accepting w w the way that things are right now in the moment, knowing that change will inevitably come. Who are you going to be when that change comes? Work on yourself, work on your positivity, work on identifying the things that you really want. That's new moon Aries, all that energy. You notice how there's no action being taken here though. It know, I know it says be bold and make the first move, but I feel like what that's saying is it's energetic. I'm saying this is what I want. I'm not impulsively snatching that or like grabbing that and being like mine it's like different. Do you feel me? It's more so of, it's that orienting energy of this is what I'm going to stand for now. This is what I'm here to do. And since the last card said, get some messages from your higher self and meditate. Um, for those who feel that they don't have any practical actions in the moment, we're going to pull some extra cards for you to see what messages from your higher self want to come in for the collective who feels they have not a good practical option right now and that'll close us out bueno we have the knight of pentacles ironically movement <laughs> the eight of swords the nine of swords the three of wands, the wise old tree. Okay, I mean, it's saying like, don't do things the way that you've done them before. Like what you, what you know 
um, and you're you're in a you're in you, there's no practical action because you're in a bit of a mental entrapment. Something that you believe is keeping you stuck. Uh, not only is it keeping you stuck, it seems like it's making you worry like a lot. So um, there is potential for growth here, but you need to identify like what you are claiming here is something that you know is a certainty. Because the wise old tree says, sure, knowledge is good, but being too intelligent, <laughs> like knowing too much, we know the dangers of those things, sort of like an allegory, but like they cause us to become stiff because we say, it's always been this way. It's always going to be this way. And this is just now like this really solid, rigid belief. And yet, you all know I'm sort of obsessed with this Eight of Wands, uh, Eight of Swords energy because this is the card of self-victimization, self mental entrapment. If this crow just took off the blindfold, they would see that they could lean up against a sword that's right there and set themselves free. And yet they rather not see. They're like comfortably scared. They're comf they're and they're they're leaking their life force. It's all a waste. It's all a waste, and there's all this worry. You know, the nine of um, swords also indicates like not being able to sleep. Um, and or like messages coming um, at night through dreams. So maybe there's just been some like really crazy dreams you've been having and that's sort of like a form of not meditation necessarily, but it is like a, an alternate state of mind that can allow messages to come in. And it's all around wanting to grow, wanting to expand, wanting to grow. And this is Aries energy, actually the three of wands. But there's no practical action, which is the Knight of, right? The Knight of Pentacles is literally like the man of practical action and hard work. It's going to be a lot of work to address these old beliefs. So um, you can look up more of the South Node Scorpio sort of stuff. It, it looks like for these people, no practical action. You have to go back to the drawing board and say, why do I believe these things? Why am I allowing myself to become worried about what's happening? Whatever situation you're in. Why don't I believe that my dreams are attainable? Why don't I go for it? Why don't I admit to myself that this is what I want, that you want to move forward somehow? That you, that you can make a decision about where your life wants to go, where you want your life to go? This is the time. New Moon Aries. Um, I, I want to say make a 12-month plan, but don't. I mean, do, but don't. Just... Even just saying that gives me anxiety of like, I don't know what to do with 12 months. It's just the idea of like, set an intention for the year. Like, what do you want? Where do you want to be next year? What is one thing you can choose to work on this year that will make you feel happy? Satisfied, like you've grown. Okay, but remember, look with the quarter moon, the half moon here. Um, always be grateful for exactly what it is that you have and you'll get your golden ticket for sure okay that's what i have for you i guess so thanks for watching thanks for tuning in make sure you like subscribe uh, drop a comment below uh, let me know if you liked it if it resonated for you bye